uh, this uh, it's actually a series, every monthly series of uh, the Turkish Mathematical Society. And we, we have, uh, uh, you know, very good speakers in many, many fields. And today, uh, Nizar uh, is going to represent stochastic analysis, control, financial math, uh, Martingale optimal transport, and and uh, many many other fields. So, so Nizar is uh, is a uh, is a star in in my field and uh, one, and a person that I look up to. He uh, is a professor at Ecole Polytechnique uh, of Applied Mathematics, and he, he was an ICM speaker in 2010 at Hyderabad. He received an ERC grant in 2012. He, he received the uh, Louis Specialier Prize of the French Academy of Sciences. He was the uh, University of Toronto's dis distinguished visitor at the Fields Institute in 2010, and uh, many other uh, many other things. And you know, has very uh, big influence on the, in the field, and has uh, especially his main works are on uh, optimal transport, in particular Martingale optimal transport. Uh, and second order, what, what we call uh, backward stochastic differential equations, nonlinear PDs, and uh, recently has been interested in mean field games, and he's going to talk uh, tell us about that on mean field optimal stopping. Nizar, scene is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Rehan. Thank you for the, as usual, exaggerated introduction. But for, for, for all, all, all uh, as you know, uh, uh, the longer is the introduction, uh, a long introduction says a lot about your age, right? <laughs> so this means that I have been around for, for some time. Okay, anyway, uh, so I'm going to, I think you, you, you can see my slides, right? So I'm going to be talking about yes. uh, mean feed optimal transport and not mean feed games. So uh, uh, I will not talk at all about mean feed games. Mean feed games are, are Nash equilibria in the situation of optimal control uh, of a population, whereas in, in the present setting, I'm going to study a control problem, mean feed control problem, so just control of a population. Uh, and I think in a few slides, you will see exactly what I want to do. Huh? So uh, optimal stopping in uh, for a population, let me, so let me mention that this is a joint work with uh, uh, Jan Fan Zhang, my old friend Jan Fan Zhang, uh, and uh, Mehdi Talbi, uh, who is a PhD student, uh, joint supervision of Jan Fan and I. Actually, Mehdi started to do his pre-PhD year at uh, USC, and then later on, uh, we decided to, to work together on this uh, joint project. And it was kind of a way of continuing my collaboration with Jan Fan. Uh, okay, so uh, let me first start by... Uh, introducing standard optimal transport. Maybe for those of you who are not familiar with the field of stochastic analysis, uh, this is a very uh, popular problem, very standard problem in uh, probability theory. So the typical problem is that uh, we are given uh, a stochastic process Y uh, on a stochastic basis, filtered probability space. Uh, and we assume uh, integrability of the supremum of the process. By the way, capital T, could be plus infinity or not. Uh, and uh, the problem is uh, how to choose the best time, supremum over stopping times, how to choose the best time uh, to stop the process, stop the process and receive the expected reward, expected value of y tau. Okay. And here, stopping the process is stopping by using stopping times. So uh, the notion of stopping time for those of you who are not familiar with it, stopping time is a, is a random time which, which happens at a time which is in the information, in the information defined by the filtration. So mathematical definition is that whenever the stopping time happens, if it happened before time t, then this should be in ft of or t. And Ft is the filtration, models the information in the model. Uh, so these are random times, uh, which typically you, you should be thinking about the time where some process which is adapted to the filtration hits some, some barrier or exits some domain. These are 
these are ex these are stopping times because whenever this time uh, occurs it's a random time but whenever it occurs it is observable by 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 the user of uh, of this information okay uh, so uh, the typical problem of optimal stopping that you find in the literature especially economics literature uh, is uh, uh, the story about uh, choosing a candidate uh, among uh, some given number of appliance to a job for example so this is the picture is about this so this is a, a very nice and famous problem if you have if you receive let's say capital n cvs of applicants for a job independent and then you look at the cvs one by one or you receive the applicants one by one uh, and then the rule is that uh, you you have to you have to at the end of the interview you have to say to the candidate either you uh, either the job is for him or not for him or for her or not uh, and you cannot go backward in time so either you say it now or the candidate is not in the pool anymore. Uh, and in that case, you have to pass to the next candidate. So for this problem, there is a, an easy solution and the famous solution, which uh, uh, loosely speaking, says that uh, you can sleep uh, during the 37 first candidate interviews. Don't look at them at all. And starting from the 37th candidate, you choose the best one, the best one, the, the, the first which pleases to you. So this is somehow uh, the candidate selected is the green one. So this is the 37% of candidates. And then you choose the first one which pleases you. Of course, it might not be the best one, but from the point of view of expected reward, uh, this candidate is going to be the best one. So this is the story about uh, optimal stopping. Uh, of course, you can tell the same story uh, with, uh, with, 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 many, with many other uh, uh, motivations. It could be the first time to enter some technology uh, in, in, in derivative securities in finance. It could be the, first, the best time to exercise an American option, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, what? Uh, let me uh, very quickly uh, show you th the main characterization result for this optimal stopping problem. Th these are very standard results in uh, in probability. Uh, the first one. Uh, so, I'm 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 isolating uh, the uh, a probabilistic characterization, which can be conducted further, by the way. And I will say more about it. Or the PDE characterization, uh, if you are not familiar with any probability with no with any brown emotion, you can have a, a purely anal analytical characterization of this problem. Uh, so uh, both both approaches rely on uh, this notion, which is called Snell envelope in probability, which is nothing but uh, the dynamic version, the dynamic version of. Uh, of the optimal stopping problem. So what is the dynamic version? Dynamic version is simply, well, the problem that we are running for is a, is, is a problem of determining at time zero, what is the best uh, stopping policy. Uh, with the dynamic version, uh, we are going to uh, introduce an extended version of the problem. Instead of looking at the problem only from the point of view of time zero, let us allow ourselves to, to change the time origin to any time t. If you, if you look at the problem, same problem formulated to time t, then this is called the dynamic version of the problem. The dynamic version of the problem then views from time t, I call it st, you want to maximize the expected reward, but now expected reward conditional to the information at time t conditional to the information of time t. So this is exactly the same problem, but, but viewed from the point of view of time t. And now you can choose only stopping times which are posterior to time t, tau greater than t. Okay, and there is some technical issue about maximization, 
because here we, for measurability requirement, we, we are taking the soup over an infinite family of random variables. Uh, therefore, there is a notion, the essential soup notion, uh, which allows to at least to, to build something which is measurable, random variable. So this is just technical to, to, to allow for measurability. I mean, not only technical, but it also solves a lot of mathematical problems. It's a beautiful notion which, uh, which, which solves a lot of mathematical problems. But you, you can forget about it. Let's just take it like as a maximization over uh, stopping rules which are posterior to time t. Okay, so the story about this is that, uh, well, someone asks you to solve the problem at time zero and you say, oh, I'm going to solve the problem at every time t. You may think this is stupid because the guy is going to solve much more than what he's asked for, but in fact, it's, it's a very good idea. And it is the first uh, important idea in this uh, optimal control literature is that by allowing for, for, for the time origin to move, by allowing for this move of the time origin, we are going to be able to use differential calculus to take advantage of, uh, of, of the time con of continuous time and to introduce differential calculus. So the probabilistic characterization here uh, is that this process, you can, you can show that this process is in fact the smallest super martingale measurement of y. Smallest super martingale, which is above the process y, measurement of y. Uh, super martingale is the same for those who are more familiar with analytic tools, is the same as super harmonic function and it will be visible in the next characterization. So the smallest super martingale measurement of y. And in addition to that, but S0, V0 equals S0, V0 equals S0. So this process allows to characterize the value function of the optimal stopping problem. And it allows to characterize the optimal stopping rule. The optimal stopping rule is when the super martingale, when the Snell envelope hits the Y process. So because of this, the Y process is typically called obstacle. Because of this characterization, Y process is called obstacle. So somehow we, we, we view this uh, super martingale ST uh, as, as something which whenever it hits the obstacle, then it is optimal to, 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 to stop the process. Okay, uh, we can go further with martingale representation type of tools, and then we can continue this characterization by introducing the so-called reflected backwards stochastic differential equations, which are exactly the same, which play exactly the same role and exactly the substitute to the next characterization, the PDE characterization. It's uh, uh, these, these backward stochastic differential equations are nothing but uh, PDEs in, in non-Markovian framework. So let me let me go to the PDE characterization. For the PDE characterization, now uh, let us pretend that uh, uh, the process YT, this process YT uh, is in fact, oops, the process YT, now let's assume that our process YT is a, is a deterministic function. Let's assume that our process YT is a deterministic function of uh, some state process, some underlying state process X, where X is defined by an SD, stochastic differential equation. Uh, well, uh, stochastic differential equation are intimately connected to, to PDEs, to a second order Cauchy problem. And we view this connection uh, in the next characterization. So, uh, if we assume that the obstacle or the reward process yt is a function of this type, uh, where w is a Brown emotion, then you can prove that the value of the optimal stopping problem v naught can be expressed as in terms of a function small v. So this is small v of zero and x zero, where this function v solves the so-called obstacle PDE. So what is the obstacle PDE? Obstacle PDE is, we can find inside the minimum, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Cauchy problem, the PDE for the Cauchy problem. 
So think of the case if, uh, if B equals zero, B is the transport term. If, v, if B equals zero and sigma equals identity, sigma is the diffusion coefficient or the viscosity coefficient in some communities, then this equation in, and r equals zero, let's say r equals zero, then this equation is nothing but uh, the heat equation with time reverse, okay? So the obstacle equation is the an natural extension of the heat equation, but with this obstacle. So the obstacle now is seen in this expression here, obstacle is here. So what, the, what does this function, what does this PDE say? This PDE says that minimum equal to zero means that both items of the minimums are positive. So we have the Cauchy problem, but super solution of the Cauchy problem only greater than zero. And the second item of the minimum greater than zero means that V greater than G. V greater than G, this is exactly, this is exactly our Snell envelope, which is above the obstacle. Hmm? Snell envelope above the obstacle. Snell envelope here is going to be V of T and X T. And the obstacle again is G. So Snell envelope is above the obstacle. And minimum equals zero means that one of them must be equal to zero, both non-negative. One of them must be equal to zero, which means that when V is strictly above the obstacle, then you have exactly the Cauchy problem. Okay. And similar to this characterization of the optimal stopping, the substitute of this characterization, you can find exactly the same in PD, uh, in, in this analytical form. Uh, so tau star is the first time that uh, uh, the, the, the diffusion xt, v evaluated at diffusion xt falls below g of xt, which means equals g of xt in fact, because it's always greater than. Okay, so this is well known. This is very well known, obstacle PDE for uh, the optimal stopping problem. What I would like to talk about uh, is an extension of this problem uh, to the so-called uh, multiple optimal stopping setting. So multiple optimal stopping setting is now uh, you receive this uh, capital N number of CVs. Let's go back to the example of uh, choosing uh, one candidate from a certain number of uh, applicants to a job. Now uh, you have a number of applicants to a job and you want to choose two of them because you have two jobs to provide. So then you see that the situation uh, is quite different. If you think about this uh, very practical problem, then uh, uh, hiring two people with the same, uh, uh, along the same process, hiring process, uh, is not just the summation of two hiring of two separate people. Because typically, uh, well, in our math departments, uh, if we hire the first person in stochastic analysis, for example, then uh, we might not want to hire the second one in stochastic analysis and we would try to hire uh, in some other field, huh? not in artificial intelligence, but because they all want to do that now, right? So let's not hire in artificial intelligence. Huh? And so, so, so uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, hiring two people at the same time is not exactly the same as uh, just uh, uh, doing the superposition of the problems of hiring uh, one people one by one, uh, because there is interaction. Huh? Uh, this, these decisions are typically interactive. You want some complementarity, uh, you might have other criteria, etc. So we want to understand how, how, how to solve these optimal stopping problems when you have uh, uh, multiple choices. So uh, multiple choices here means that I have uh, these processes, y1 to y up to yn. Uh, instead of having only one reward process, I have n reward processes. So you, you may think about each reward process to, to correspond to, to one job that you want to, to one application. Yeah? Uh, and then uh, what, you, what you are running for is uh, when are you going to stop each of the reward process 
you have a you have to choose a stopping time for each of the reward process tau one tau n there is no prescribed order between tau one and tau n and you have some criterion which is this function phi here so this is the problem of multiple optimal stopping and uh, i will say a few words about this problem uh, because it, it was already addressed in the literature uh, and let me already tell you that uh, the situation which i'm interested in is to send n to infinity what happens when n goes to infinity so when 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 the number of uh, when the population if, if you think about e each of the yi's as an individual what happens when you have an infinite population so the mean field in case uh, so let's let's have some uh, idea about this problem little but let's gain some intuition before going to the mean field let me let me develop some uh, some intuition about this problem to develop some intuition let's consider the case n equals two n equals two so just you are going to you have to you are going to hire two people again the same example okay i'm going to discuss it in the context of sdes because later on i would have this type of sdes but but the story is the same and uh, there is a a very detailed paper by uh, Kobylansky, Marie Clarkenez, and uh, Elisabeth Rui uh, about this problem for 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 general uh, uh, stochastic processes without any mention to any particular structure. Okay, so as I said, the problem is to find uh, two optimal strategies, tau one and tau two, so as to maximize expected value of. Uh, of this reward. So the reward is combined. Okay, so the natural idea, if you think a little bit about this problem, it's not too difficult. There is very, very natural idea is, uh, is that, uh, well, uh, you can reduce this problem to, to the choice of one singular optimal stopping uh, policy by the following feature. You have to find the first time to stop the minimum between tau one and tau two. So at this first time where you stop, there are two possibilities, either tau one less than tau two or tau two less than tau one. If tau one less than tau two, this means that the first particle has been stopped and then you are left with the problem of stopping the second particle, right? That's very natural. This means that at time tau one, if tau one is less than tau two, then at time tau one, you are left with the uh, Snell envelope problem. This is the super martingale from the previous slide. You are left with the problem of choosing the second. Oops. Uh, okay, so let me continue. Uh, okay. now, now, how to reduce uh, this uh, two optimal stopping problem? Two optimal stopping, two, 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 one. So the idea is very simple. You, you see the first time that you stop. So first time that you stop is either you stop because you're stopping the first particle or the second one. If you stop the first particle, then still you have to stop the second one. So S tau one, two, by definition, let me see if I didn't write S tau one, two. So in the other case, if you stop tau two, then you still have tau one to stop. And then let's check that this is, this is correct. So you see, I'm defining this S tau uh, for, of the set one, so with with particle number one, labeled one, left to 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 be stopped as the supreme should be essential supremum. But but let me not write essential supremum because it's too too long for this for this for this line. Of again the problem viewed from time tau of the reward when you choose tau one and and the second particle is frozen at time tau. You see tau is is given here. So it's a very natural solution. You, you, you freeze one of the particles, the first that you stop, you freeze the first particle that you stop, and then you only have, you, you, are, you are left with one additional particle to stop, with one remaining particle to stop. Okay, idea is very simple. So, uh, so by doing this, 
you are defining uh, two stopping problems, S tau one and S tau two. So the problem of stopping particle number one, the problem of stopping particle number two, and by doing this, you are reduced to an standard to a standard optimal stopping problem. One stopping, choose one stopping, but for the maximum reward. So you you're gonna choose the criterion uh, turns into the maximum reward once you stop. So this is very natural, uh, not only very natural, but but it can be extended to n to n particles. If we have n particles, and it's done in this paper by Kobylonsky. Uh, Magdalena Kobielanski, Mike Erkenes, and Elizabeth Rui. Uh, and so the story, you can imagine how is the story, but, but it, it is, it is, it is uh, the, the only difficulty is that it is co combina co combinatorial. Okay, I cannot, oops, let's wait for this, I think, no. Sometimes I cannot change the page. I don't know why. Okay, let me do this. Close it. What's going on? Oops. And open again. Okay, now it works. Now, if we go to n particles, if we go to n particles, the situation is the same, except that you have to, to consider all possible subsets of particles that you can stop at some time. Okay, with two particles, you can either stop one or the one or the other. Now, if you have n particles, you can stop any one from the n particles, or two, any two of them, or any three of them. So it's it's combina combinatorial. Huh? So uh, that is the way to write it. And uh, so here the problem is to stop these n particles. Again, x1 up to xn, and to choose this tau1, tau n. And I'm introducing this notation, n means n in the bracket. The bracket with n here means just the set of integers from one to one, the labels of the particles. Uh, and then what, what you're going to do, you're going to solve uh, an optimal stopping problem for every subset of particles for every subset of particles. So for every A subset of N, you would like to study the multiple optimal stopping of the particles contained in A. And if you remember what we have said before, uh, this is converted, reduced to an optimal, to a standard optimal stopping problem with the particles outside A, which are frozen. So that is the reason why you have, we have this continuation PDE, the Cauchy problem, the PDE coming from the Cauchy problem, which is here where I am missing, there should be, sorry, I'm just realizing that I should be multiplying by one A, one I of A. Oh, it is already written sum over I in A, so it's okay, I'm fine. So, we only diffuse those particles which are in A, the other ones are frozen. This I can read it off from the PDE because only the generators, these are the generators of the particles, only the generators corresponding to the alive particles are acting. For the other particles, there is no generator. So, so, so they are frozen. And now the obstacle for the eighth problem, when we take the subset A, is the maximum over all subsets A prime, included in A, V A prime. Okay, so you take all the problems with a subset of particles, subset of A now, and you take the obstacle is the maximum between all these value functions. This is an immediate extension of the two particle case. And then you have some final condition. The final condition at terminal time is phi, which is the, the criterion, which is defined in the beginning. And whenever there is no particle anymore, there is nothing to stop. So there is also another uh, boundary condition phi there. Moreover, from this, from this characterization, 
you can define the optimal stopping times recursively. Again, because once you know the optimal stopping for one stopping, then you always use the maximum of the sub the sub problems maximum of va prime as an as an obstacle for the next problem so you can imagine you can imagine how to write uh, the, uh, the the recursive sequence of optimal stoppings so as i told you uh, my interest uh, is in sending n to infinity. What I want is to send n to infinity. And this is the only reason why I am specifying a certain type of dynamics where uh, each particle i's dynamics is defined by uh, the coefficient b, which, which depends on s, its own position x i s and the uh, uh, the and the, uh, the, the, the and the empirical measure of, of, of the, the end particles and similar for the diffusion process because I would like to, to have some limits for this SDE, which is going to be a Mackin-Rath of SDE. And then we are going to, to work on the population of PDs. So uh, before doing that, I would like to write this, this, this problem differently, this PD characterization, I can write it differently. And the way to write it differently is just to replace the VA instead of writing VA, instead of, to, instead of indexing the value function with A, I am indexing the value function with the marks of the particle. So Y is the mark of the particle. So YI, namely YI is one if the particle is alive and zero otherwise. So I'm just taking this variable, which is one of zero. So it's a mark on the particle. Whenever the particle is frozen, I put zero on it. Whenever it is still alive, it is one. And if you if you do this, then you can write the the previous PD exactly in this equivalent form. Okay. So again, uh, what happens when n goes star? When n goes to infinity, it's not very clear what happens to this uh, to this PDE here, especially because of this maximum of obstacles, which shows up here. What about the optimal stopping rule? Tau hat n, etc., which can be determined recursively, and uh, and finally, uh, well, can how can we can we obtain the limiting uh, PT? Uh, so population now n goes to infinity. Now I I want to view a population of particles, so I I cannot see the faces, so I cannot distinguish between between people. I can only see their position, and I want to see them just statistical properties of this population. So this is what we want to do. And uh, so we, we go directly to the, to the mean field framework. And then we go back later to the end particle framework. So in the mean field framework, we have a, a stochastic differential equation X, uh, which is defined by a process X, which is defined by this stochastic differential equation for technical reason, it's more convenient to work on the product space. So the product space is the set where the process X takes values. So these are continuous function with values in RD and the set where the stopping takes values. And I call X and tau the corresponding canonical process, meaning that XT of any omega is omega of T so omega is some, something which is a continuous function in RD and uh, tau and tau here is uh, takes values in the interval zero capital T indicates the stopping decision. Uh, so uh, direct correspondence between the, the tau and the indicator function that I was talking about, this yi variable uh, is that I can define it as the indicator function of tau greater than t, meaning that as long as tau is greater than t, then it equals one here. So this means that the particle is still alive. And again, when it equals zero, this indicator function is zero. Okay, so uh, we take p to be any solution. So it's a probability measure on the canonical space under which we have a decomposition of uh, the canonical process X and I in this form. So we have this decomposition. 
And we postulate assumptions on B and sigma, which are the standard ones. So Lipschitz in X and in terms of uh, the measure component in the sense of Wasserstein distance two. And now the problem is to maximize. There is no expectation anymore because the law is there anyway. So we want to maximize some function of the law of the stopped process. Notice here that in contrast to the standard optimal stopping problem, mm -hmm. the, the, the law, the decision, the stopping decision, so tau, impacts the dynamics of x. If you look at this uh, dynamics here, then the tau is involved in the dynamics. Okay, how to solve this problem? Uh, well, uh, as usual, uh, one has to go to the main tool, which is uh, introducing the dynamic version and then introducing uh, the dynamic programming principle. In the, in the present context, uh, the dynamic version, so again, our problem is set at time zero, but now we are going to view it at every time t. So at time t, we view our problem, value function is t and m, and we want to maximize this function g of the final law, x capital T, i capital T. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I put tau or t here, because remember once, once one particle is, is stopped, it gets frozen there. Uh, and then the supremum now is over all probability measures p. So in the weak formulation, these are all probability measures p under which the canonical process has this decomposition starting at time little t from the distribution m. This is p of t m is the set of probability measures which are induced by these dynamics starting from, from the initial condition initial law at time t for the pair process x i is m. Okay, now uh, the first step is to write this dynamic programming principle which relates the value function at time t to the value function at any later time s. The problem is deterministic. There is no difficulty in this dynamic programming principle. It's very easy because it's a dynamic, because it's a the dynamics of the measure m is deterministic. There is no stochasticity anymore in this formulation. So this, this proposition is a few lines. There is no problems with the usual problems with dynamic programming principles with measurable selection type of uh, technicalities. Here they are completely absent. And as usual, once you have this dynamic programming principle, once we have this dynamic programming principle, as usual, we would like to send time s to t. Uh, and therefore, obtain the infinitesimal analog substitute for this dynamic programming principle. The hope is that this infinitesimal version of the dynamic programming principle characterizes the value function in the sense that it will we will have uniqueness out of it. And therefore, I don't need to record all this DPP. I just need to record the local characterization by sending S to T. This is very standard in optimal control. So we want to redo the same thing in this context. And of course, when we send S to T, we need to understand, we see what happens here, for those who are not familiar, we need to understand we are, we are having V at time S minus V at time TM, so the difference, the difference, this means that zero equals integral from T to S of DV of R and P. I'm going to call the pair X, I, Y, S. So the next question is, what is this guy? What is this guy? That is called, we want to, to understand what is the differential calculus. Okay, so this question has been around for some time now. Uh, it was first solved by Pierre Williams uh, around 2006 or before uh, uh, for, for diffusion processes. And then there, are, there have been uh, many extensions 
and in our case, we need an extension because, because although the process X is an ATO process, we have the process I, which is a pure jump process. Uh, so it is not available in the literature. There is the paper by Mete and his co-author, which is the closest one to this, uh, but not does not cover this context. Anyway, so uh, this gives me the opportunity to introduce this uh, uh, general ITO formula. Uh, for that, we need to understand what is uh, uh, the differentiability theory on uh, on uh, the faster time space p2 of r d prime well i'm using d prime instead of d because i have x which has dimension d and i which has dimension one so this is i plus one so this is why i'm taking d prime so uh, we take this space of uh, square integrable probability measures uh, it is not a vector space uh, but still we can define uh, the so-called functional linear derivative uh, by, by using the convexity of the space. So we just write the first order Taylor formula for this, u of m prime minus u of m, and definition, we will say that a function u is differentiable or has a functional linear derivative. If I can find a function which is called delta m u, which is now a function of m and the variable y of the underlying space, such that whenever you make the difference u of m minus u of m prime, you find this function, delta m, evaluated at any convex combination, lambda m prime plus one minus lambda, I, lambda, lambda m, integrated with respect to m prime minus m dy, and then integrate again the lambda between zero and one. So this is a classical formula in in, in differential calculus that we take as a definition here, and which you can prove that it is equivalent to, to having a Gateau derivative at any point in time, no? in any direction. Uh, okay, uh, more on this definition, more about this definition, I would say that u is C2, if in addition, this function delta mu, which depends on m and y, there is another dependence. The other dependence is on the parameter y. Now I want my function delta mu to be C2. Y is in Rd, Rd prime. I want it to be C2 in that variable. And if there is a time variable, then you do the same thing with the time. Okay? So with no, this notion is very easy to understand. For example, if you take u of m to be uh, the, uh, if you take u of m to be uh, any integral of a function against m, uh, then the derivative, there is, if there is no phi, you would get exactly f of xi. And because there is a nonlinear function phi here, you would get phi prime of the integral times f of xi. Okay, so this is, uh, it's very natural because without phi, you have a linear function of m. So you expect to have a constant as a derivative. And the constant in this context is a function of x, is a function of x. x and i, because we have two variables here, y. Okay, one more observation. This definition says a little bit more than just the first order Taylor formula. It says that we have some growth condition, but, but, but this is just technical and absolutely crucially needed in this context, because you see that in our Taylor formula, we need to integrate this delta m function, delta mu, with respect to m and m prime. And we only know that m and m prime have, have, have second order moment. So these are about integrability conditions. And you have similar integrability conditions for the first and second derivative. So we can forget about them. So the, the, the important message here to catch, to, to, to catch and to keep is this formula. This is the important message to keep. Now, once you have this definition, then immediately you can prove this Ito formula. And the proof of this Ito formula, I followed this literature from the beginning. It was looking a little bit technical, very technical, pages and pages. Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, this, 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 this Ito formula is very easy to prove. And it's very easy to reduce to the classical stochastic analysis context. 
Namely, uh, here what you do for ETO formula is typically you want to, you take this difference, u of t mt minus u of zero m zero, and you write it as a telescopic sum of u of t i m t i minus u of t i minus one m t i minus one. This is a typical proof. And now uh, then you get rid of the t i variable because you can always write uh, m t i here to have the same m component and correct this term by u t i minus one m t i minus u t i minus one m t i minus one. For the second one, for the second difference, so for the first difference, sorry, for the first difference, here MTI is the same on both sides. We have MTI, MTI. So only the time T is moving. So this is immediately DTU of S MTI, DS. While for the second one, we are going to use our definition of integrability, which says that this is integral of delta m u t i minus one. t i minus one is fixed here, t i minus one. And here we have this lambda, let me call m bar lambda. m bar lambda, m bar, what I call m bar lambda is lambda m t i plus one minus lambda m t i minus one, the convex combination. And then there is y and everything is integrated with respect to MTI minus MTI minus one dy d lambda. So there's a double integral. And the lambda is integrated between zero and one. Now you see, I will write only one more line. Now, please view the last integral as, can I use another color? Oops. Let me try. Oh. Now, please write the last one as this is equal to integral, <laughs> double integral. Okay. For the second integral, you can view it as expected value of delta m u t i minus one m bar lambda. And the integration with respect to this variable is in fact x t i. Yti in my proof, it's y, yti. While the integration with respect to the other variable is the same, same function, ti minus one, m bar lambda, comma, comma, x ti minus one, and everything d lambda, everything d lambda. Now you're done because you have a function of x t i minus a function of x t i minus one. And the same t component, same m bar component. So you just apply eto formula to this function of x. And we know eto formula in every context from stochastic analysis. So once I get here, I am back to stochastic analysis. Okay, so if you have a diffusion, then typically you will have a generator. Uh, of the diffusion. If you have a jump diffusion, you'll have a generator for jump diffusion uh, and so on, blah, 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 blah. You can even imagine having a Tanaka formula for this, etc., etc. You can always, yeah, now we're back on our feet. We're back to uh, standard stochastic analysis. And this is how we get this formula. This is how we get this formula. I'm not expecting in this short time that you understand every term, but you can see that this is what you get from ETO formula with jump process. Well, there is a little subtlety here because you have an expectation. So you have to make, to pay attention to the jumps of the marginals, marginal distributions and the jump of the process itself. If you take for, and these are not the same. For example, if you take the Poisson process, then this is a pure jump process while the marginal distributions of the Poisson process are continuous. Okay, so one, one set of jumps is included in the other. So that's the only thing to pay attention to. Okay, anyway, once you have this ETO formula, 
uh, then we can go back to our problem. Now in our problem, we have the Y process has two components, the X component and the I component, which is either the particle is leaving one or the particle is dead, is frozen to zero. Okay. And then, uh, uh, and then you, I, this is just applying the previous ETO formula to our context. Okay. Uh, so uh, how, how much time do I have? How much time do so, I still have? Um, we had like a break, so it would be over ordinarily, but then I think we can add maybe 10 more minutes because of the Ten more minutes. switch ah. had, to, had to do, we had to do. Okay, and I don't get paid for my Zoom link. Right, we should, you should ask for it. <laughs> we will have to, we have to get we have reimbursed from the okay. Turkish okay. society. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, no. I, 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 I can accept minutes for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll try to finish in 10 minutes. Thank you, Rahan. Uh, so, so, so to let's let me go back to th this was a, a long parenthesis about how to go from the dynamic programming principle, which requires to compute this integral dv, to the equation. Because now, typically, what I'm going to do is apply my ETO formula to this v here and then send s to t by appropriately scaling this integral to get an equation, okay? It's very standard for those people who are familiar with control. This is a very standard way of doing it. But in this, in this special context, we had to, to develop the differential calculus, which applies in this case. And in fact, it's, I'm talking about this proof because uh, I think if you look at the literature, uh, this proof is really the simplest one. Of course, after there are many results, you can always simplify. This doesn't mean that the previous results are less interesting. But I think it's interesting to look at this proof because we are back to standard stochastic analysis. Okay. We send the time step to zero. Uh, what do we get? Well, I need to develop another notion, which is very natural in this context. So I have to introduce this ordering between probability measures. I need this ordering between probability measures. So I will say that probability measure M prime is less than M. If it can be obtained from M by killing some particles. Okay, look at this definition. What I'm saying is that, so remember one is the index for living particles. So the living particles in M prime represent only a proportion P of the living particles in, one, in M. So I have killed a proportion one minus P of them, right? Therefore, the frozen particles in M prime, first there are, these are the previously frozen particles in M, already frozen, and the additional one minus P ones which were alive, okay? Very natural definition. So I can go from M to M prime just by killing a subset of particles. So this is why you have naturally uh, in our context, probability measure, if you go from, uh, you can go from XTIT to from XTIT minus to XTIT because you kill part of the IT. IT is a Cadillac process. And in here, you can see that this PT of X in this situation is nothing but the probability that IT equal one, given that you start from X and that IT minus is one. How, met, how much of the living particle you keep living? So, in terms of game theory, uh, pure strategy if P of X is zero or one. Otherwise, these are randomized strategy. Okay, so once we have this definition, then this is what we get when we send S to T. This is the equation or the so-called dynamic programming equation. This is my favorite name. You can call it AJB equation or Hamilton-Jacobi here because there is no stochasticity. 
I think DPE is the best name. Some people call it master equation because whenever there is an equation on the Wasserstein space, they call it master. I don't, I'm not a fan of this uh, denomination. I think master equation is something else in infinite games. So I, I, I prefer to call it DPE, dynamic programming equation. So the dynamic programming equation here, it has three components. First, uh, it says that this uh, DI derivative, so the DI derivative was defined in this slide. We look at this delta mu i, which is delta mu at x and i. And then we make the difference between i equal one and i equal zero. I call this di. And what you can prove is that diu is non-negative in this sense. M almost surely, m1 under the measure conditional on living particles is exactly equivalent to u is non-decreasing in the sense of this uh, ordering. Mm. So this is the first part of the equation. Second part of the equation that you get by this Ito formula by sending the time step to zero uh, is minimum minus LU equals zero. And here LU is, you see we have the generator of the diffusion which we get, which is what we get in the standard definition, in the standard optimal stopping. But now because of this mean field feature, we are getting the integration of this generator with respect to M applied to Delta M. Because remember in our Ito formula, we apply Ito formula to Delta M function, to Delta M. So it's very natural. So there is this L double bar, which is the Dinkin operator plus this integration with respect to the measure. So that's part of uh, the dynamic programming equation. And the minimum is overall CUTM and my notation for CU is the set of all measures which can be obtained by killing a subset of particles immediately by immediate killing of subset of particles so that u of tm prime equals utm. If you remember standard optimal stopping, then you should remember that it is optimal to stop when the value function is not changed by, by, by stopping. Huh? If it is not optimal to stop and you still stop, then you are going to, to change the value function. So this is the meaning of this set. And then again, the final condition. Okay, uh, so this is, dynamic programming equation. And for the remaining five minutes, if I may take more five minutes, I would like to develop further this, uh, uh, this dynamic programming equation. First, we can prove that if we assume that the value function is smooth enough, then V is a solution to this dynamic programming equation. And verification result, if we can find a smooth solution of this DPE, then we can prove that this smooth solution is equal to the value function, is equal to the value function. And we have some optimality criterion, which, which says that the optimal measure or the optimal stopping in fact, uh, satisfies some, some optimality criterion. Let, let me go quickly on this. We can do everything for jump diffusion, it doesn't change anything. It's only making heavier notations because of the Ito formula. Uh, now, uh, viscosity solutions. Viscosity solutions. We don't like the regularity assumptions in the previous statement because typically it's very difficult to check that this value function is still one two. And in many examples, the value function is not. In fact, we can, if you take mean variance hedging, this type of applications, you can see that it is not. Uh, so viscosity solutions, for those who are not familiar with viscosity solutions, the idea is to take the equation, I'm rewriting the equation in this form here. The idea is to uh, replace the derivatives of the value function by derivatives of functions which are tangent from above or from below. So in the present context, we can develop a theory of uh, viscosity solutions by introducing similar things but instead of taking neighborhoods as in finite dimensional spaces, uh, we take neighborhoods along, along the, the controlled process itself, along the controlled 
diffusion itself, controlled by, by the storm. This is very much in the spirit of uh, what we have done with John Fenn uh, on uh, path dependent DP, PDE with John Fenn and Ibrahim Ekuen and, uh, and, uh, and Christian Kellerer and Zenji Ren and many others. Mm? So similar spirit, we can introduce the functions which are tangent from above, the function which are, well, this one tangent from below and this one tangent from above. In principle, the colors correspond. Uh, and we can define them with semi-continuous envelopes for, for those who, who are familiar with this. Then main results. Uh, first, this notion of viscosity solution is consistent with classical solutions. So if the function is smooth then classical solution and viscosity solutions are equivalent, mm -hmm. there is a stability result that you can prove. Uh, the value function of the optimal stopping is a viscosity solution of this equation in, the, in this sense. And you can prove a comparison result for this dynamic programming equation. And with this sense of viscosity solution. So namely that viscosity super solutions are above viscosity sub solution if, if this order is, 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 is already the case at the terminal condition. Now my final result. Final result is if I go back to the end particle case. So I have this, the finite population model with end particles that I started with. If I go back to the end particle case with the Makin Vlasov type of uh, structure of the underlying process, uh, then what you can prove is that uh, the value function of the mean field optimal stopping, which is a solution of our DPE is you can prove that it's uh, the limit of uh, the finite population model. And uh, what I like about this proof is that we adapt the beautiful and easy proof of Bar sugamidis convergence of monotone schemes in this context. We can adapt it uh, in this context and we can obtain uh, this, uh, this limiting result, which is a version of the propagation of chaos uh, but for this optimal stopping problem. With this, I will stop and I will be happy to answer any questions if you, if you have. So these are the list of questions that, which are not still solved in this context. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nizar. Are there any questions? So there is a question uh, from Ibrahim Ekran in the chat box. So Ibrahim, can you ask your question? Yeah. If you're... So, I mean, uh, first of all, hello. Hi, Ibrahim. Um, my question is maybe diagonal to what you are doing. And at some point you are talking about this combinatorial aspect on the choice of which particle to stop. Uh -huh. Right. Is there any link of this with uh, multi-armed bonded problems? In particular, I mean, if the dynamics of particles are very similar, I should know which particle to stop if I decide to stop right now. I should stop, I mean, the highest well, one. The optimal strategy should tell you which one to stop. This is what, this is the characterization which, which I was very quick on. Without computing an optimal strategy, do you have something like a Gittins index or something like that? Mm, no, 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 no. We have nothing like that. We have nothing like that. Okay. Uh, interesting question because it should be related, right? Yeah. Uh, but there is nothing like Gittins index here. Uh, well, good question. Good question, Brian. I, mean, I would think it might be related by. Um, <laughs> Some controls are simple instead of being mixed. Can you, yeah, just the question. Okay, thank you. Good, good point. Any more questions? May I ask an easy question? Joseph, yes. You said uh, it is uh, all results extend to jump diffusions and yes. The question is, um, there is a very simple version of jump diffusions, namely Markov chains, where you have a finite state space. And often it's analytically considerably easier to prove uh, 
results for those uh, in those situations. Is this also here the case? When you really have a finite state space, well, where your particles move and you have just a pure jump there. Uh, well, the difference would be that the generator, which is a differential operator here, would then be just the matrix. by the matrix. Yes, and then everything should be analytically very straightforward. Easier. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a very. But good is point. that the case? We because never, we never, we, we did, we didn't, we did not go through that. Because sometimes but, you have the possibility then to 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 create all results as limits uh -huh. from this case by a proper discretization in yeah, yeah. space. That's, and that's a good point. Also often the, it's very easy to make yeah. the proof in this case. There you the set practically of have measures, no set of probability measures is finite. It's a finite. It's on a simplex. Right. It's everything is finite dimensional. Yeah. Then and the question is: is is in this case, I mean, mm -hmm. in my view, it should be true that everything is then relatively easy. And maybe this combines with Abraham's question, by the way. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good way to to see uh, what what is the nature of these equations. Yeah. Uh, in the finite state. Markov chain case. Yes, thank you. Yes, right, that's a good point. Because I have sometimes the the, the the approach when I prove I don't know Ito formulas or so in the general semi martingale case in my lectures, I start first with this finite state space uh, um, uh, setting where everything is very very simple and sometimes you can just by a continuity property of the Ito formula get it then from this immediately. <laughs> And I suppose that here might be a similar situation. But there's we a non-linearity, need... right? There's a control yeah. problem on top of it. So it might not be true that it converges. Like You still need to prove convergence, yes. Of right. course, of course. But then still... But then, then, then maybe this this uh, it might even be interesting to understand under which yeah. cases this doesn't work. And I think bar Suganidis uh, also, yes. in a way, here it works philosophically perfectly. they do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. so, it's just a it's just a, a sort of conceptual question yeah yes yes thank you thank you okay otherwise thanks for the great talk it's always beautiful to thank listen you, to you developing slowly your thoughts i have to leave now thank you Joseph. bye, -bye. bye. <laughs> nice to see you Joseph. bye thanks for the for the series you're welcome. Uh, any other questions? I have another question. Tricky question. Right. Uh, what is the I mean? What is the topological property of the neighborhood that you are considering that makes that? It's right? compact. It's compact. Huh? Yeah. You have the compact. That's, of solution. that's that's the reason why we're taking that one. That one is compact, exactly as in our papers. Huh? And, and I mean, compactness of that neighborhood. This is what 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 makes things work. But I mean, so your how far are your I mean the measures that you are taking, right? The diff, I mean, you can think about these measures as uh, curves in Wasserstein space. How far are they from gradient flows? I mean, are they? I mean, are they all solution of NSD? Can you see in this direction? saying that all the all these measures you are taking are in fact absolutely continuous in the Wasserstein space or not? How far are they? I mean compared to they're not absolutely continuous because there's the the sigma is is not the same. No, but I mean regardless of sigma, even if you have sigma as a curve of measures in the space of measures, uh -huh. the measure of an SDE it is the measure generated by an SD solves a Fokker Planck, therefore it is mm -hmm. the gradient flow, right? So it will be an absolute continuous curve in Wasserstein space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you think about this theory. And these things, how far are they from this kind of logic? Okay. How far uh, are they from uh, the solutions of Fokker Planck equations? Uh, can't answer, Ibrahim. <laughs> okay. okay. This is beyond, okay. beyond my knowledge of this problem. Huh? Okay. Hmm? Thank you.
but uh, we'll be happy to discuss it. We'll be happy to discuss it privately if you wish more. Huh? Okay. And to learn <laughs> from you. Hmm. Okay. These things. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Um, so how how is this approach different than uh, Sonar, Burzoni, etc.? So you said you didn't contrast the two approaches. Like what? Well, as opposed to them, so your compacts, the test functions are different in this in this setup. The, the, yes, the, the definition of viscosity solutions is different. Mm -hmm. uh, the paper by Burzoni. Uh, Repen, Mete, and who is the fourth author? Uh, um, yeah, one of his former students, I think. Ignacio. Yeah, Ignacio. Ignacio. It's a very beautiful paper because it's the first paper which says that, which uh, points out the fact that these equations are, in fact, first order equations. And then they, they apply the uh, the method for comparison of viscosity solutions of first order equations, which only requires doubling variable technique without Grandal Ishii lemma for those who are familiar with that. Uh, the only difficulty, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great observation. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's a great observation. I, I love this observation. I was very happy when I, when I saw it. Uh, now, now the, the, still there is an, an issue there is that uh, in the doubling variable technique, you need to penalize by the distance to the diagonal. So you create these variables x and x prime or x and y or whatever you call them, and then you penalize by n times norm of x minus y square, modulus of x minus y square. Uh, uh, but uh, on the set of probability measures, uh, the uh, natural thing to use is the Wasserstein distance for that. Oh, they use a different distance, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, no, the Wasserstein is not smooth. That's the, the beauty of norm of x minus y squared is that it's smooth, so you can take it as a test function, whereas the Wasserstein distance is not smooth. And so they find a substitute for that, which is very tricky, which is very, very tricky. Uh, but, and they, they can make it work at the price of uh, strong assumptions on the dynamics. So namely, they do not allow the dynamics to depend on the state, and they mm -hmm. do not allow the controls to depend on the state. So these are uh, right. deterministic controls in that paper. That's true. So right. many right. restrictions, but still I love it. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I love the, the idea that, uh, because the, the observation is 100% correct. These equations are first order. Mm -hmm. So I, see. Hmm, I think it's an, a very important observation in that paper. So here it's different in the sense that uh, we are taking a different neighborhood. The tangency condition, the tangency condition is stipulated in this neighborhood, which is defined by the process itself in the spirit of what we have done with uh, Jan von and Ibrahim and uh, Zengier, Christian, uh, all the friends uh, for Path PDs. That's it. Yeah, I think the, the fact that it doesn't depend on the state is a big, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a big limitation uh, in that paper. Big limitation, right. But, but, but still the observation is, is very cute. Mm -hmm. I see. Just to comment, this is also related to the, I, mean, I think SD is given, I mean, measure, flow of measures given by SDs are essentially absolutely continuous and you have first order equations. Uh -huh. That is I think, one of the simplifying factors. Okay, you can view it like that, Kathleen. Right? Okay, I, I don't have this uh, point of view, so I'm not familiar with, with what you're saying, so I would be very curious to understand it <laughs> more. All right, any further questions? I have one more question, like, uh, is, is it, would it be possible to formulate as, this as a game also, or? You mean you mean you mean to add up to the structures a structure of mean field game, right? Like, so, uh, like, could you could you have a mean field game in this kind of context? It's th there is some literature on that. 
Uh, there is a paper by uh, Charles Bertucci, papers by uh, Peter Tankov and Roxana uh, Dimitrescu. Uh, so there is some, there are some papers uh, mm -hmm. dealing with mean field games of stopping. Okay, so besides we didn't go that direction because it's it's already in those papers. Okay, okay, uh, I see. And in this case, viscosity solutions with mean field game, it's not, it's not, uh, it's difficult to to talk about viscosity solution because typically you want to substitute, you want to take right, optimal right. control and to do a natural equilibrium out, out of the optimal control. And in viscosity yeah. solutions, you usually do not assume that uh, you have enough regularity to to access to the optimal control. Right, right, right. So, yeah, so because it, that equation is yeah. non-local, right? So then the, yeah. there's no discussion. Yeah. Exactly, here, right? exactly. Here, it's situation is different because we, we, it's easier in the sense that we, we don't have this, the issue of fixed point from the Nash equilibrium. On the mm -hmm. other hand, we have to address directly the uh, the uh, the control affecting the the induced probability measure itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's see. Well, okay. let's see if there are any more questions. Um, may I ask you a question? This is oh, yes. founder, uh, from New York. I, I, I have a slightly different question, uh, not exactly on the topic of the talk, but uh, things around uh, you discussed. Thank you very much, first of all. Thanks. It was a great pleasure. So my question is the following. You mentioned several time jumps, and also we, we discussed a finite uh, state uh, jump mark of processes. And my question is whether the field of mean field uh, jump processes exists or not. So, mean field like games trust. is jump processes. Mean field games is jump processes. Yeah, for, for jump processes. Yeah, for mark jump processes. Pure jump without diffusion. Ah, pure jumps. Yes. Uh, well, Markov chains final state. This is done by Rene. The first is the final state. state. Um, yes. yes, I'm asking just in general. Jumps. Uh, I would guess that uh, it is. Uh, I would guess that it is available because what is what would be the main difficulty? I I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, very good. I usually like when it is diffusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, because we recently, yeah. we recently, mm -hmm. I recently worked with uh, Albert Shiriaev on uh, um, forward and backward uh, equations for jump processes. Uh, and uh, I wonder whether uh, people are interested, uh, if there is any literature on mean field results in this field. Uh -huh. Maybe someone else from the audience know, knows if there's I've never seen any, any papers. Yeah. Erhan, are you familiar? Uh, you? Yes, there are some there are some results on jump with jump processes. You mean like uh, Levy Levy type things or Poisson Markov chain or uh, Markov chains? Yeah, you, yeah, there Mark are some mean field games with Markov chains. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can Markov send you a few changes. references. With Markov field chains, jump, yes, yeah. I know. Markov chains, Rene Carmona, right? With uh, with whom? With one of uh, his. I I have done some results with Asaf Cohen, okay. Franço François de Delarue recently. Actually, also. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh okay. yes, and yes. And, and thank you. Mm -hmm. Alekos with Alekos also checking. With Alekos, right? Yes. Yeah, you, I mean your postdoc, right? So he, isn't he at yes. yes. Ecole called Polytechnique. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, this is. It. Is that sorry for the mishap in the middle? It's okay, as long uh, as I have my audience. <laughs> Yeah, we kept actually uh, most <laughs> yes. of the people, so that's 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 amazing. So, <laughs> uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I hope to see you around, and uh, yeah. thank you for everybody for attending. Uh, so, let's give a, a, a hand of appreciation for Nizar, at least with some emojis. Or <laughs> thank you very much. All right, Dita. Thank guys. you so much. Have a nice Bye, evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.